Hey, this is the Bursus Effect. I'm Nicole. This is my brother Michael. And we are back with another reaction video. We are continuing the SpongeBob conspiracy series with the sixth title, The Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory. It's quite a long name. This one is like almost 27 minutes long. I do like the Goofy Goober song. I do too, and I especially think, growing up actually is pretty nice. Yeah, so you think they'll discuss cool. that the meaning of that song maybe? Um as part of this? Yeah, I think they're gonna get into like what that goofy goober what's that place called? The goofy goober Yeah, where it was like it's like bar Chuck E. Cheese and stuff, right? but like they have like this thing that the kids are worshipping pretty much. Okay. But what if they talk about how the ice cream gets them actually drunk? Oh what, what if there's yeah. like drugs in the ice cream. Okay, maybe. All right, yeah, a death cult where you drink it and then you d you all die or whatever. Like, well, maybe not die, but like maybe become like more. It says cultish. death, death cult. Yeah, but maybe they want to like kill people. Okay, well, in Family Guy, there's an episode where they all drink poison and die, and it makes me think like death cult. But that's right. You read the title correctly. This is the Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory, and no, I am not joking. This seemingly innocent ice cream parlor is a front for something very sinister. The beloved SpongeBob movie actually has a much it's darker, music. tragic meaning to it. I am being 100% serious when I tell you that I think this is my best, most convincing theory yet. And if you thought my evolution theory was dark, well, Get ready. This is the Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory. I'm worried. I'm excited. A snake? A big mouth snake. Turtle? What does this have to do with it? Something, I'm sure. Guinea pig? What was that? show on Nickelodeon with the little pets. The Hey, uh, what's I don't the know. biggest animal that you have? Oh, God. Oh, boy. Man, Alex has finally lost his mind. Goofy Goober alien death cult theory? What, did he make that in a random word generator? Trust me, there's actually a lot to this theory. And if anyone's qualified to make it, it's me, considering I made a whole web series about a restaurant being a front for a cult. Here at Pizza Time mm. Pizza, we don't use any preservatives or fake ingredients. Pizza Time Pizza is not a cult. But that is terrifying. I'm the SpongeBob guy now, and there is an insane demand for more of these theories. I mean, the Mrs. Puff one has like 12 million views. That is crazy. Thank you guys so much. Now, this is the part of the video where I try to make you think I'm about to start the theory, but then, oh boy, a sponsor. Everyone loves those. But today, I'm actually sponsored by a company that I'm really excited to talk about. Happy Meat Farms is an animal farming company that offers a variety of different delicious meat products. In the meat oh, industry, no. there's so many factory farms out there that force thousands of animals into Great. livable spaces and pump them full of no. animals. But Happy Meat Farms is a completely humane and organic alternative. Every animal has plenty of wide outdoor space to roam free, and every animal is raised 100% naturally with no added chemicals. As an animal you lover myself, I am so grateful to be you sponsored for by Happy Meat Farms. If you want to learn more, so, do you you know how there's always like those commercials that show similar things to that like we're natural we're grass but that's completely false i'm sure i'm sure they're just saying that for an advertisement they don't really do that and they do the same exact thing as not, uh, no preservatives in their stuff yeah you probably do yeah and if you so want to compete you're gonna do that since we're paused in the beginning when it was showing like the turtle and the guinea pig and he asked what's your biggest animal do you think he's getting that to feed Yes. To to the yes. the thing. Exactly okay. the All first right. thing that came to my mind. So it it's starting they tie together and the fact that he's using Happy Meat Farms as the sponsor. Wow. I I mean we're probably watching it out of order, but it's very interesting since we've seen the Happy Meat Farms. So let's keep watching this. About them and what they stand for, go to happymeatfarms.com. Now let's begin the theory. Mm -hmm. 
Goofy Goobers is an old-fashioned ice cream parlor that first appeared in the Spongebob movie. It's the very definition of a fun, innocent place for children. It's so like Chuck E. Cheese, but with a peanut. To the conclusion that it's actually an alien death <laughs> Probably, yeah. Uh... What even is an alien? Well, maybe death not. Cult? Usually, maybe. it's a religious group that Chuck wants Jesus you to believe that one day aliens will come to Earth and take the members of the cult to a better place. And in order to get there, they have to commit mass suicide. The most infamous example of this being Heaven's Gate. Like I said, this is going to be a die. very dark video with some serious subject matter. So, how does this have anything to do with Goofy Goobers? In the more recent seasons of SpongeBob, they've started referencing Goofy Goobers again. In fact, there's even an episode called The Goofy Newbie where Patrick gets a job there. And it's in this episode when Patrick is watching an employee training video that I first realized there was something more going on here. The story of our ice cream begins with our founder, Reginald Goober, who for some unexplained reason was nicknamed Goofy. In 1842, he headed west in a covered ice cream wagon. He served his warm ice cream on rocks and sticks. From those humble hmm. beginnings, Goofy Goober has grown into a multi-billion dollar business. You know, it's a pretty standard company video. They just want their employees to wash their hands and keep their work area clean. We only ask that you, one, practice good hygiene, two, maintain good work habits. Nothing out of the ordinary, except there's one more thing that they want you to do. And three, believe in extraterrestrials. Ice cream. Huh. An organization huh. that wants you to believe in aliens. That couldn't be a Heaven's Gate reference in SpongeBob, could it? No, that, that's, that's that crazy. Episode. And even if it was, it could just be a random throwaway gag. There's no way Goofy Goobers is actually a cult, right? But then I started to rewatch every appearance of Goofy Goobers and things took on a whole new meaning. One of the most basic ideas of a cult is that they strip you of your individuality and make you change your entire identity to be about the cult. And that's exactly what Goofy Goobers does. Everyone there wears Goofy Goober uniforms just like a cult. I mean, what other restaurant has not just employees, but customers that always dress up in a specific way? And their theme song that is constantly repeated and reinforced is just the simple line, I'm a Goofy Goober, yeah. Yo, I'm a Goofy Goober. I'm a goofy I mean, the only costume is the hats. We're all goofy goobers. It is literally just a song saying that your whole identity is based around goofy goobers, and that's it. And in the SpongeBob movie, there's a scene where SpongeBob and Patrick have to try their best to not sing along to the theme song, and it literally causes them intense pain to not sing along. It's the movie. Yeah. It's as if they've been brainwashed and physically can't stop themselves from singing it. And you can't even just chalk this up to Spongebob and Patrick being weirdos. Two other fish can't stop themselves from singing along, even though it means they'll get beat up for it. Goofy, Goofy, Goober, Goober, yeah! I love that. <laughs> and just like how many cults have an icon or god that they worship, Goofy Goobers has the dancing peanut mascot that's all over the restaurant's branding. I mean, just look at how excited all the kids are when he comes out. They're kids, though, and he's a, just a mask. funny looking mascot. All right, but just Come because on, kids give me like more. a mascot doesn't mean that they have some kind of religious war. That's all so far fetched well, at the moment. Don't believe me, take it from SpongeBob himself. Open your eyes, Patrick! We blow bubbles, we eat ice cream, we worship a dancing peanut for corn's sake. We do not worship. We worship. Patrick, you've been wearing the same Goofy Goober peanut party underpants for three years straight. What do you call that? Ew. <laughs> worship? It's only a starfish. Goofy Goober token that reads "In Goofy We Trust," replacing the word "God" with "Goofy." Oh, okay. Culty, aren't they? Never noticed that. Material about their beliefs for their followers to read, and Goofy Goobers is no exception to this. In the new SpongeBob spinoff, The Patrick Star Show, we see a Goofy Goober employee reading some kind of book about ice cream. And look at him, he's not busy working, he's choosing to read this in his downtime. I mean, compare him to Squidward who sometimes reads in his downtime at work. It's not like he's reading about the Krusty Krab. This book is a his nose. With the doctrine for a cult's beliefs. A major part of how cults get so successful is by getting their followers to give them money. Now, obviously Goofy Goobers charges people for ice cream, but they actually convince their followers to trade their money for a made-up Goofy Goober currency. Uh, 
I don't know what Plankton's paying you, but if you let us go, I can make it worth your while. What is this? Uh, that, sir, is five goober dollars. Legal tender at any participating goofy goober. This would explain how the goofy goober founder, an idiot who sold ice cream on rocks and sticks, turned the company into a multi-billion dollar franchise. He convinced people to believe that aliens would one day take them to a better place and got them to give them all their money. Another tactic that cults use to indoctrinate people is overloading them with compliments and making them feel special. And that's exactly what Goofy Goobers does to yeah. Patrick when he gets a job there. The Trini video says that they appreciate him. Hello and welcome. As a new Goofy Goober employee, we'd like you to know that we appreciate you. And then his manager says the exact same thing. I'm your manager, and I want you to know that I appreciate you. And then despite Patrick messing up and causing chaos, the manager says it once again. I'll give you another chance tomorrow. If it doesn't work out, I'm afraid you fired. Is the Goofy Goober costume full of ice cream? There is no reason for the manager to be this appreciative of Patrick after all the terrible work he's done. He's just trying to emotionally manipulate him. The tactic is especially effective on vulnerable people like children, and we see this in the Patrick Star Show. Not only did Patrick start eating Goofy Goober ice cream when he was young, and eventually ended up working there and worshipping their god, but this green kid also grew up to become an employee at Goofy Goobers. There's a clear pattern here. Kids who eat the ice cream all eventually join the cult. They are specifically targeting children for indoctrination, but their manipulation goes far beyond just psychological no, no. tactics. Trust me, we've just scratched the surface of how far Goofy Goobers will go to brainwash its members. Things are about to get darker. So I'm not sure. Kids show. <laughs> I know. I told you it'd get better. Well, I, I just assumed maybe. I never said that, but whatever. No. <gasps> what? That's Neo. If he sacrifices a cat, I'm done. Done. There's a that is not SpongeBob cool. SpongeBob movie where SpongeBob and Patrick go to Goofy about. Goobers and eat tons of ice cream all night to the point where they become completely drunk off of it. It's a really funny scene, but it begs the question, why does the ice cream get them drunk? Maybe that's just how ice cream works in the SpongeBob universe, and it's the show's way of making a family-friendly alcohol reference. But we've seen other instances where characters eat tons of ice cream and it doesn't have this effect on them. All right, well, maybe this was just a one-time gag for the movie, and it's not a consistent part of the continuity. But in the season 11 episode, Call the Cops, we get this scene. <laughs> One too many goofy goobers again, eh, Patrick? Donut headphones. So, another deliberate reference to Goofy Goober ice cream having a weird alcoholic effect on people. Is it possible that they put something in the ice cream to make people more open to cult indoctrination? Cults have been known to use drugs to keep their followers obedient and suggestible. One of the most infamous examples of this being Charles Manson, who used LSD to convince his followers of his beliefs. If this is the case with Goofy Goobers, they'd probably want to make sure everyone <laughs> There Guess that's a good as idea. Ice cream as possible, and the Goofy Goober building <laughs> you can is trip out. cleverly designed in a way to ensure that this happens. There are no windows in the entire building, so you can't tell whether it's day or night. And the Goofy Goober clock just has random numbers on it, so it's impossible to keep track of time. Because of this, SpongeBob eats ice cream all night and is actually late for work for the very first time. Also, can I point out the fact that the eyes and the rough. clock seem to follow Patrick around in the Goofy Newbie? It's a really creepy and specific detail. <laughs> I mean, we know from the movie that the eyes are usually supposed to be looking straight ahead, but here, they're always watching Patrick, their next target for indoctrination. Now, if the ice cream is what keeps the followers weird. in line, they definitely want to make sure their employees were eating as much as possible. And it turns out, Goofy Goobers actually has a policy about this. Wow, I can't believe Goofy Goobers employees get to eat all the ice cream they want on this job. Hmm. The employees get to eat all the ice cream they want. Hmm. Very interesting. And there's evidence to suggest that the ice cream could do a lot more than just make you suggestible. At the beginning of the Goofy Newbie, Patrick is holding up the line asking for samples of ice cream. The employee he's talking to gets frustrated and calls for security to kick him out. Security, we have a sample mooch at the counter. 
But there's something oddly familiar about this employee. Hang on a second. Isn't that Patrick's sister? The new spin-off, The Patrick Star Show, is a prequel to the main show that introduces us to Patrick's little sister, Squidina. And here, we see her all grown up, working at Goofy Goobers. She's even credited as Squidina is that as the same, same voice actor. In The Patrick Star oh, Show, okay. we actually do see her eating Goofy Goober ice cream as a kid. Yeah, but she doesn't with know, the pattern so. of kids who eat the ice cream eventually getting indoctrinated into the cult. Now, Squidina and Patrick have a very close, loving relationship in The Patrick Star Show. But here, they act like they're total strangers. It's not surprising that Patrick would forget his own sister, but Squidina is always portrayed as being smart. It's almost like she completely forgot about him. One of the biggest tactics the that cults use to indoctrinate people is isolating them from their friends and family to make them more vulnerable and dependent on the cult. And that's exactly yeah, but he said they were in the credits, credited in the no same voice. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. They always use the same voice actor for different people. No, they said Squidina was in the credits. Wow. Why would the creators go out of their way to specifically credit her as Squidina, unlike the other random employees who are just credited as employee? Feels like they're deliberately trying to draw attention to it. At the end of the Goofy Newbie, Patrick goes crazy and eats a ton of the ice cream, and then the episode ends in a very interesting way. Oh. Now, I don't think Patrick was actually abducted by aliens. I mean, we see him on Earth in the very next episode, and the UFO has the same fake look as the one in the training video. I think that because of all the ice cream he ate, he now fully accepts the Goofy Goober's beliefs, and it's caused him to hallucinate the UFO. So, at this point, I'd say we can make a very strong case for Goofy Goober's being a cult, but with this realization comes a very dark and tragic new meaning for the SpongeBob movie. Believe me, you will never look at that movie the same way again. It already was a weird movie. I don't want to see this. Why a cat? Why? It's not fair. I mean, I know that the cat's not actually going to get harmed, but it's just the concept. And it does look like Neo. It's an orange kitty. The 2004 Spongebob movie is my favorite thing to come out of the franchise. It's funny, it's emotional, and it encapsulates everything great about Spongebob. In this movie, Spongebob goes on a journey of self-discovery and realizes that he doesn't need to change who he is and grow up to fit into society. He just has to embrace it was his really emotional. and be himself. It's a great message that feels really fitting for the character. but. If you replace the word kid with Goofy Goober, Spongebob's arc takes on a whole new meaning. It's not about Spongebob embracing being himself. It's about Spongebob fully accepting the indoctrination and beliefs of the Goofy Goober cult. The movie starts with Spongebob not getting promoted to manager of the new Krusty Krab, a job that he desperately wanted and believed that he would get. When he finds out that Squidward got chosen instead of him, it completely destroys him. Cults will target vulnerable people who are at extremely low points, and the first place that Spongebob goes to after having his heart broken is Goofy Goobers. After a night of getting drunk off of ice cream, he becomes resentful of Mr. Krabs and decides to tell him off. I deserve that manager's job, but you didn't give it to me, because you say I'm a kid. Well, I am 100% man, and this man has got the In 100% man. I'm 95% man. Spongebob probably would have quit and been fully able to join the cult. Spongebob and Patrick go on a quest to retrieve Neptune's crown, and it's almost like every obstacle they face along the way is specifically designed to make Spongebob and Patrick realize the dark truth about Goofy Goobers, but they fail to do so at every turn. 
So they first stop at this tough guy bar that's full of men who beat up anyone that isn't manly enough. <laughs> But I think there's actually a lot more going on here than it seems. This <laughs> actually love has those an eyes. insane amount of similarities to the Goofy Goober ice cream parlor. They're both shaped like boats, they both have bikes out front and a bar inside, and they both have two word titles that start with the same letter, Goofy Goobers and Thug Tug. Is it possible that this Thug place Tug. is actually a former Goofy Goobers establishment that was abandoned? I mean, they literally have the Goofy Goober theme song on hand. <laughs> SpongeBob, it's the Goofy Goober theme song. And they claim that no kids are allowed here, yet we see some old kid-sized handprints in the bathroom. If this really is a former Goofy Goobers, then these guys would probably know the truth about the cult, which would explain why they're so okay. against having anyone who's not manly in the bar. It's not because they hate kids, it's because they're trying to keep out a dangerous cult. If SpongeBob and Patrick just stuck around a little longer, maybe they would have learned this too, but they quickly sneak out and even make fun of the tough guys at the bar. Come on, Pat, one more time. Okay. We're on a baby hunt, and don't think we don't know how to we. <laughs> Clearly, they didn't get the lesson they were supposed to from this place. Then they go through a fish graveyard and stop at a random ice cream stand, but it turns out it was actually this a trap for a monster freaky. to unsuspecting- This always scared me. Okay, Patrick, let's yeah, you did not like that part. You remember that? I would like quotes we back. referenced this in, I think, one of our llamas with hats videos or something. something. That One of our reactions. Keeps them trapped. It's like the ocean is literally screaming the truth to SpongeBob and Patrick, but they just aren't getting it. But then they reach an obstacle that's just too great for them to pass, and it makes them reevaluate some things about themselves. We're not kids. Open your eyes, Patrick. We worship a dancing peanut for corn's sake. You've been wearing the same Goofy Goober peanut party underpants for three years straight. Oh, you're right, SpongeBob. It isn't until Mindy helps them realize that they're more than just Goofy Goober kids that they can continue on their <laughs> journey. They sing an entire song about how they believe in themselves now, and Patrick even says this. Now that we're men, I changed my underwear. They have finally broken free from the cult indoctrination. Clean but underwear. It doesn't last very long. They're stopped by a hitman Plankton hired to take them out, and he completely destroys all the progress they've made to grow as characters. Step aside and you won't have to feel the awesome wrath of our mustaches. These. Oh, they were fake? Of course they were fake! They end up getting abducted by a scuba diver, well, who to them is a terrifying a alien from command. another world, which is an interesting parallel to Reginald Goober being taken by aliens. They're taken to Shell City in a room full of dead fish, a place eerily similar to a death cult after a mass suicide. While SpongeBob and Patrick are being dried to death, they decide to fully embrace the Goofy Goober's beliefs and spend their last moments alive singing the Goofy Goober theme song. I'm a Goofy Goober, yeah, yeah. Thinking that they'll go to that alien place. But then, just like death cults always promise, they and everyone in the room are reborn when the sprinkler system turns on. <laughs> Whew, this is, uh, it's getting real dark. Then we get to the climactic finale of the movie. SpongeBob returns to the Krusty Krab, now a changed man. He has to battle Plankton and his army of mind-controlled slaves, and this is how the final confrontation plays out. And if I've learned anything during that time, it's that you are who you are. So yeah, I'm a kid, and I'm also a goofball, and a wingnut, and a knucklehead McSpazitron! <laughs> What's going on here? But most of all, I'm... Hey, okay, settle down. I'm... Take it easy. I'm... What the scallop? I'm a goofy goober! I'm a goofy What the scallop? <laughs> I'm gonna start watch, saying this that. Is such a what the scallop? <laughs> moment for SpongeBob, but in reality, this is the moment that he has gone past the point of no return and becomes a goofy goober. Now, with that this is awesome outfit and the video is over boots. and then surprise you with a last-minute twist. But 
I don't need to pretend this time. If you think this entire video has been insane rambling and none of this could possibly be intentional, well then just for you, I have saved my best piece of evidence for last. Are you ready? While Spongebob sings the Goofy Goober song, we cut to him standing on the world and getting abducted by a UFO. And even the UFO's lights make a pattern of red, yellow, red, which is eerily similar to the Goofy Goober UFO that has two red cherries with a yellow banana in the middle. And that is the Goofy Goober alien death cult theory. Good. The kitty is, the kitty is okay, and the kitty is fluffy. Uh, wow. Didn't think I could uh make these theories any darker, could ya? Gotta love that good old family-friendly PG-rated SpongeBob. I am did having so kitty? much fun making these videos. Don't worry, she we've did, got plenty like more it. on the way. I'm just right. making SpongeBob stuff from now on. I've been your host, Alex the SpongeBob guy. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. That's not creepy. No! What did you do? My boy, I took what you brought me. No. No, 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 but... I changed my mind. I, I didn't. I didn't give you the cat. You purchased the cat. You brought it to this home. I simply finished the job. No, no. Th this is not what I wanted. Okay. This is. This isn't worth it. We are fucking done. Last time, and then I want you out of this house. Uh, uh, uh. I have like tentacles. It's like, what? What are you willing to do for fame? What are you willing, you know how like people are so, there are so many people out there that'll do anything for views or followers. But to sacrifice a cat? Yeah, but I think that's what this could, this, this could be could another- How could you? Could Look be how a, cute. How could you even joke about it? Pick anything but a cat. Oh, that is so upsetting. Like, this comes to, like, I got a real example in real life, like, what people will do. I mean, there's a TikTok challenge where people would dry scoop tons of pre-workout, right? There's uh, a couple times where these people, like, get really sick from it or have a heart attack. And I remember there's a video on YouTube of someone that actually did it and they were really sick. And someone actually, there's a couple cases of heart attacks from it, young, healthy people. And... It's like, what are you willing to do for followers? Do you, are you, don't, do you not have the common sense to realize that it's 
very, very bad for you. And it will have very harmful effects. So much caffeine will make you have a stroke or a heart attack. And there's plenty of other examples of what people will do for views. Like Nico up. Yeah, avocado, yeah, like he'll, he'll just do anything. Destroy your body, do like really bad things. And maybe that was, I don't know, maybe not the point of it. Maybe it was. But this guy is literally doing anything in the skit uh, to get views. He is trying, like he knows that these Spongebob conspiracies are getting views and people like them. And he is willing to do sacrifices, and the guy, that creature even said, you, you, you and I both know that you can't go back on it now, you, you need to keep this going, and you want to keep this going, so you're going to do whatever I say, kind of thing. The tone of this was different, so besides those cuts to his skit, when he was just talking, he was like, thank you so much, he's all cheerful, and at the end he's like, I'm only doing Spongebob videos from now, I'm and he was, his guy. voice was all happy, like, where the other videos, he's like, here, I'm your Spongebob guy, like, he was, like, kind of upset, like, that's all he was, and this one, he was more like, yes, so is, is this cult video timed with the sense that he's talking about Spongebob getting indoctrinated and not finding the real self and now Alex Bale is like just accepting his fate that he's the Spongebob guy. You know, like Spongebob had to accept his fate that he's a goofy goober. The whole, you know, having the Happy Meat Farms commercial and sponsor and then now we actually see the tentacles so we kind of see a connection to, to Mother because Mother had tentacles and we know Mother was in the Happy Meat Farm, so it is starting to tie together. It's really creepy. The cat thing was super upsetting. I know no cat actually got hurt. I know it's fake. It's just she the idea. Cats. Why cats? They know I have five cats. There's cats in these videos all the time. And I don't like any movie or anything that kills a cat or, or insinuates that. Pick something else. I don't like any animals getting hurt. Had to be an orange cat, of course. But at least Alex Bale was going to back out and realize this isn't right. But then it still happened. And it was such a cute kitty, too. He up to him meowed at him. Any other thoughts on the Goofy Goober theory itself? No, I thought it at first was a little far-fetched, but it definitely solidified its theory. I mean, it still could be... I don't know. I think it might be true, honestly. I mean, at least partly, part you know. Bit, maybe like I mean I do. I saw the references to the aliens, and we knew that the ice cream was more like alcohol or drug. Like we knew the song was very like hip. Yeah, but hypnotism. it could have been done for a joke instead of like this whole thing. Who knows? Yeah, it might not be an actual dark. theory. Yeah, but I think a lot of these. I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll never know. I mean, these theories are pretty good. There's a lot of evidence suggesting that they're real, and some things are far-fetched that I guess you can make it work to fill in the story, but, I mean, if you're like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, like that last piece of evidence that he said he saved the best for last, I was a little let down by that. I thought that was probably the most far-fetched piece he presented, but... Either way, it's entertaining, and I thought it was different because usually he incorporates his skit at the end, and this time it was, it was in between. Like with Act 1, Act 2, Act Yeah, three. so that's so, interesting. If you have any thoughts on this episode, if you think it is far-fetched or if it was actually a good theory, let us know down in the comments down below. You know, Let us know if you thought it was good or bad, and... Yeah, you guys have a nice rest of your day or night or whatever time you're watching this. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.